What's up guys, Velocity from Pitchfork Academy, back with another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up this anime stylized skybox effect, which is an awesome replacement to the built-in and very expensive volumetric clouds, which are quite nice, but in my opinion, they can be a little bit of an overkill for an indie game or especially a stylized game. But before we get started, I'd like to invite everyone to join our free and public Discord server, the Pitchfork Academy. It's a great place to connect with like-minded individuals, share some of your work, and maybe even get some help. If you'd like to join us, the invite link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, here I am in a default version of the Unreal Engine 5.6 third-person template. Nothing special, just the default map that loads up with the editor. And if you're using the same thing, you'll probably have a folder in your outliner called lighting with a ton of stuff for the lighting. For example, your directional light, your exponential height fog, skylight, things like that. But we definitely need a sky sphere. So this is where we'll be putting our new anime or stylized skybox. And we don't need the volumetric clouds. So what I'll do is just click that and delete them. If you don't have any of this stuff though, maybe you're working in a different project where it doesn't come with any of this, what you can do is go to the window tab and there's this really handy option here called environment light mixer. You can just click this and anything that you don't already have as far as your lighting goes, there'll be a button here at the top. For example, since I just deleted the volumetric cloud, there's a create volumetric cloud button here. And if I click this, it'll just create it and add it back. I'm gonna delete that again though, we don't need that. And then I can close out of my environment light mixer. And now we just have a blank sky. And if we click on the sky, it'll just select the sky sphere. Essentially what the sky sphere is, is a big sphere set to 400 units scale. And it's has inverted normal. So we see basically what's on the inside of the sphere and not the outside. And what we need to do is get a sky box texture to put onto that. But first let's set up our folder structure. So I'll just right click in my content browser and make a new folder called materials and then another folder called textures. We're gonna put our texture in here for the skybox and then we'll make a material here. What we can do really quickly is just browse to the material that's currently on the sky sphere. So it's this M simple sky dome. I'm just gonna to browse to that and I'll click control C and then I'll go back to all and then content and then my materials folder. And then I'll just control V that in here and I'll click on it and then click F2 to rename it. And I'll call it M underscore skybox. And then I can double click to open this up. And as you can see, there's just a couple of nodes here. This actually adds back in the sun disk. So you'll be able to actually see the sun disk over the skybox if you want. Um, we're going to disconnect that for now and just set it to be up here. And then, yeah, so this is all set up, ready to go. It's already set to be unlit shading model. So we can just uh, save this and close out. We'll add some stuff in there later. And now we need to go ahead and get our skybox. So here we are at freestylize.com and I just clicked on the skybox option up the, at the top. There'll be a link to this in the description. And essentially you just wanna find a skybox that you like. There's a ton of cool ones in here that are all stylized and sort of anime themed or Studio Ghibli um, style. What I'm gonna try to find is just one that looks pretty simple, nothing crazy. Let's try this one here. I do like this one quite a bit. What I'll do is just click the 2K resolution. You can, for example, donate and get the official 4K and 8K resolution, which I do recommend doing if you're doing a production ready game or project and it needs to be the highest possible quality. But what I'll do is just get the 2K resolution and it will download it and it'll put it into a zip. So I'll just browse to it. And then what we can do is, let me find it, I'm on my other monitor. So you just wanna right click that folder and click extract all, and then I'll browse to a folder that I want it to be in. I have a tutorial folder here, so just double click on that. And then that's where it'll extract the file to. Cool, so now I have the straight up texture, the PNG, it's a 2048 by 1024. And then we also have a folder here which has the individual pieces of the skybox. Um, if you wanted to do it this way, there's a couple different ways to do skyboxes. For example, you can do it with a cube, but we're just gonna use the sphere method for this tutorial. So now that we have our texture here, that's great, but it is a little bit of a low resolution. So what we need to do is either 
you know, you can get the official 4K or 8K resolution, which I do recommend for a final product, but temporarily, just to get a nice crisper image, we wanna go ahead and go to this free AI image upscaler website. I'll link this in the description, and then we need to just go ahead and drag in our image. It'll do its thing, it'll kind of upload the image and then bring you to another screen. And then you just wanna click the two times over here on the left. And then you can experiment with these different sharpen and denoise settings. I'll leave it at default for now, but if you get your final result and you feel like it's too noisy or not sharp enough or too sharp, you can experiment with these and then just click render. It'll take a sec and then it'll actually show you a nice preview of before and after, which I think is really handy just so you know that it actually did something. All right, so it looks like it's finished upscaling. And as you can see now, we have a slider bar with the original on the left and the result with the upscaled version on the right. If you hold control on your keyboard and scroll in with your mouse, you can zoom in and see a little bit easier the difference. And yeah, the one on the right is just miles clearer. And if you really want it to be even more clear, you could try to upscale to 8K, or if you're trying to get the most professional version possible, I would just go ahead and donate to the Patreon and get the 8K resolution here. But for now, this version should work. So all we need to do is click the little download button here on the bottom right of the image, and then it downloads it. And as you can see here, uh, we see 4096 by 2048. I'll go ahead and just right click this and open file location. So now on my other monitor, I have the image here ready to drag into the engine. And then we can just go ahead and, well actually before we drag it into the engine, I forgot we need one more step. And that is to go to this website, and that is the convertio.co, and we wanna do the PNG to HDR. So I'll just drag in my image to here, and then click Convert. So by default, the Topaz Labs, it exports a PNG image, which is great, but it's not the file format that Unreal accepts for a cube map. It needs to be an HDR image for Unreal to recognize it as a cube map. So now that it's finished converting, we can download this. And then now we have the final image. So if I browse to that, um, that's now on my other monitor ready to drag in. Now I can minimize the browser and this file explorer. Now if I go to my content, textures, I'm now ready to drag in this HDR. And as you can see here, it imports it as a texture cube. And that's what we want. We want it to be a texture cube so that way Unreal knows that it is to be used for a sky or a skybox. Now we can go ahead and just click save all. I'll click save there. And now if the engine crashes, we won't lose that import. And now we're good to go ahead and go to our materials folder and open up our skybox material. All right, once we're in our material, the first thing that we need to do is actually drag and drop our texture into here. So I'll just click and drag this to the side so we can still see the graph and then make sure that we're back in our textures folder with our HDR cube map. And I'll click and drag this right into the material and it'll make sure that it's the right texture uh, sampler type as linear color and all that. And then what we need to do next is to set up the UVs. So since it's a cube map, it's a little bit different from just a regular texture coordinate setup. We wanna get the world position. So I'll right click and search for world position and then a rotate whoops, rotate about axis node. The position will be our world position. And our pivot point will be zero. So we just need a single vector. So I'll hold one on my keyboard and click to get a single constant vector of zero and just plug that right in. Our rotation angle will be a parameter that we control in our material instance for how we wanna rotate it. So I'll just right click on this and promote to parameter. And then the normalized rotation axis, that's the rotation axis that we want to rotate the cube map around. So if I just drag this to the side and click on any actor in the level, you'll see that it has this gizmo with the green, blue, and red arrows. This is indicates the axis or the orientation of the mesh in the world. So we want to rotate the cube map, for example, around this blue arrow. So think of the cube map that has this blue arrow as well. We want to rotate it around that, similar to how I'm showing now. So to do that, we can hold three on our keyboard in our material, and we'll set the Z value to be one. So as you can see, it sets it to be blue. That's a good sign, just like how our arrow is in the level. And this is the axis that we wanna rotate it around. So that's how you set that up. If you wanted to, for example, rotate it for around the 
red or green axis, you could do that as well, but it's unlikely. Next, we can drag off of this and search for add. And we just wanna add that back to our world position. This just helps make it work. And then off of this, we want to normalize this. And then from here, we can just plug it right into the UVs and that's ready to go. We could plug it in how it is, but let's add a couple more controls to fine tune our color and whatnot. So I'll right click and search for desaturation and then RGB into the top node. And then I'll just hold S and click for another scalar value and I'll call it desaturation. Default value of zero is fine. We don't wanna make any saturation changes right off the bat. Um, from here, we can drag off and multiply. And we'll multiply this by a constant value, um, or sorry, a constant color. So I'll hold V on my keyboard for a vector parameter, and I'll call this color. I'll double click the color, and then I'll set the default value to be fully white. And then this goes into B. And this is good because anything multiplied by one is just itself. Simple math, but it's cool that it works for colors and things like that. And then from here, we can just plug it right into a of color, click save and then I'll drag it to dock next to my level. Next, we can go to Content Browser, Materials, and we'll make an instance of this material here. I'll call this mi underscore skybox underscore day. And then if I just click on my sky anywhere, it should take me to my sky sphere. And then I just wanna replace the instance on the material with the new one. And right away, we get the change, and it even changed the lighting a little bit in our scene. As you can see, a little bit dark here, but as soon as we add this, it lets some of that lighting and that color into our scene, which is really nice. It kind of gives some ambient light to our scene based on the color of the skybox, which is awesome. Now, as you'll notice, the sun still is independent from the sun in our skybox. Well, let's say that you had in your scene, your sun was already positioned to a nice angle that you had that, for example, lit your scene in a really nice way. Well, you would actually want to rotate the skybox to fit that. So if you open up your material instance that we created for the day and then open up some of the parameters here. So we have these three parameters. The rotation angle is quite literally the rotation of the skybox. So as you can see here, the sun looks like it's coming from around this angle. So you could rotate the cube map until it looks like it's about lined up. You could eyeball it. Um, but one trick is if you go back into your material and we get an add node and we just add in these nodes back that were in it by default and click save, we actually get back the sun disc. And this is the actual position of the physical sun of your directional light that is lighting your scene. So now you can really line it up with your skybox to be perfect if you want. And then now it's super accurate. And because this is more of a sunset skybox, it makes sense that the sun needs to be lowered. And then it actually tints the scene a little bit with that sunset hue because of the sky atmosphere. Now, of course, depending on the sky, box, the sky box that you got, the sun might be up higher. You might have a moon, you might have different things in it, and then you could adjust the sun accordingly to that. But once you line it up really, really nice, you can go back to your material and you can either leave this if you like the way it looks or just bypass it. And then if you ever need to readjust your sun, you can just come back here and plug it in. Now, if I save and go back, we'll just have the default sun from the skybox. If we go back to our material instance now, we can check the other couple parameters here. We have desaturation. If I set it to be one, that's full desaturation, black and white, no color. If I set it above one, it will actually start to invert the colors more and more. So we don't want that. But if you go negative, let's say negative 0.5, it actually saturates the color more. So if you wanted it to be more vibrant, you could go that route, or you could also saturate your whole scene in your post-process volume if you find saturation here, global saturation, and then you could increase this as well. So that's another way to sort of stylize your scene if you wanted to change the saturation. And then of course you have the final parameter here, the color. If you just overall wanted to tint your skybox a certain color, you can do that here. And what's really nice is it does directly affect the scene because it's in the skybox. And it's in the cube map, so it, it does light with the ambient lighting there. 
I might leave mine a little bit more of a warm color since it is a sunset sort of vibe going on here. All right, that's about it for the parameters. And now we can go full screen and check out how it looks. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Of course, if it's still too blurry for you, you could always get that 8K version or try to find an 8K image upscaler. But for most games, this is in the background anyway, and the player will be mostly focused on things in the foreground. But if you really needed the sky to be even higher resolution, you could try and get an 8K version if you like. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for this tutorial on how to create a stylized skybox with sort of anime or Studio Ghibli style clouds. If you learned anything new at all, it'd mean a lot to us if you left a like on the video and subscribe to our channel as it lets us know that you wanna see more videos like this one. This has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy and I'll see you in the next one.